Hello and welcome to today's video. In today's video I'm going to show you how to use Power Query to combine multiple files together that moving forward would make you a single data set that can be updated just by you saving new files into the same folder. So at the moment I've got two files in this two combined folder that I've made. Now if we have a quick look at the Argus data you'll see we've got headings at the top and we've got 2,156 rows of data, so 2,155 rows of actual data as the heading to row one. Likewise, if I have a look at the August data, or the September data even, I've also got the exact same headings, but in this one, there's a, a lot less data, there's only 200 odd rows of data. Let's have a look what we've got at the end. 202. So there's 201 rows of data. Now to combine them into one data source and put them into this sales report spreadsheet that I'm going to be using, I'm going to go to the data ribbon. In the data ribbon, we've got this area called get and transform. And in there, I'm going to use get data. And from its menu, I'm going to pick from file. From file itself has a sub menu, and I'm going to pick from folder. Now I've done that, I need to navigate to the folder where the files are. So I'm going to browse, and I'm going to navigate to where I've got that folder saved. Once I OK that, Excel will analyze that folder and it's found that there are two files in there. So to now make them into one data source, I'm going to use the option of combine at the bottom. And under that, you'll see we've got three options. We can combine and transform the data so we can manipulate it even further, maybe remove columns, format columns, add our own calculated columns if we wanted to. I can just simply combine and load it, or I can combine and load to where I can specify where that new table that it's going to make is going to go. I'm going to choose the top option and once I do that this will then open Power Query. So because the folder could have a lot of files in what Power Query is now asking me is which one do I want to use as my main focus for when I'm manipulating the data. So by default it gives me the first file that it's got but I can go in and pick a specific file if I, if I decided to. Within there, you notice the data wasn't formatted in tables, so it's just asking me which worksheet I want to use in this case. If there were tables in there, it would give me a list of the tables. Now, I'm selecting the sales data worksheet, and I'm going to press OK. In a few moments, Power Query will open, and you'll notice that it's already done quite a few steps. So at the moment, the first item was it looked at the source data. And a common question that I get asked by delegates when I'm showing this is, is there a way to limit this to only um, combine certain files? So there is a few ways we can do that. If you're doing a monthly export, and you know, as an example, you'll see both of my files begin with sales data and then the name of the month. What we could do is we could go into name and make it do a filter where it begins with sales data. You can also restrict the type of file that it's dealing with. At the moment, it's showing the extension of SLSX. So I could go in there and do a text filter that has to equal that, so it wouldn't be CSV files or even older Excel files. Now from there, it did some filters, it moved around, and change some items and then finally it then pushed the data out into this format. Now at this point most of the columns that are in here 
are my original data columns. We have a new column, however, which is just telling us the name of the file that the data's come from. All the ones that were existing columns, you'll see, have been formatted in this general number, um, text and number format. The final step that it did for me was it then clarified which ones were text, which ones were numbers, and which ones were dates. What I'm going to do is a little bit further cleaning up that data, and I'm also going to get rid of certain columns. So I'm going to get rid of this column in a moment. Before I do that, though, I'm going to go along and we've got a unit price column. It's been put in as number. I'm going to format that as currency. I'm going to replace the current step that's there. And I'm also going to do the same for the extended price. At this point, now I've done that, I'm going to get rid of this source name column because we don't really need that in our output. And I'm pretty happy with that now. So I'm going to send that to my Excel file that I've got. If I go to close and load two, you'll see I've got the option to simply close and load it. Or if I do close and load two, remember we can be specific with where that's going to go. So I'm going to pick that latter option. It now is going to make me a table of that data. And by default, that table would be a brand new worksheet. But I'm going to, as I've got this blank sheet one here, I'm going to say use an existing worksheet. I'm going to say start the import at A1. Now, once I've done that, you'll see the data's come in in this new table and it's combined the two files together to give me a, a total record of 2,356. Now at the moment, if I was to add another file into the folder, it wouldn't automatically refresh. I would have to come to this panel and I'd have to click on the refresh button. But if I right click on this panel here, on the combine option at the bottom, and I go into properties, you'll see within here, I've got some options of to how to make it more dynamic. I can make it refresh every so many minutes. What I'm going to do is pick this option here, however. Refresh data when opening the file. So every time we open this file, it's going to look at the data set, see if it's changed, and it will add more data in. So I'm going to pick that option. I'm going to press OK. And because it's in a, in a OneDrive area, it's automatically saving this file. So remember, we've got 2,356 rows of data so far. If I close this file, and what I'm going to do now is I've actually got another file to add in. So I've got my October data. So I'm just going to drag and drop that into my combined folder. So we've now got three files in there. And if I return to Excel and I open my sales report, It is refreshing the query that we created on Power Query. And if I now go to data and I do my queries and connections, and I'll just make that fill the screen now, you'll see we've now got 4,073 rows of data. So it's added in that new set of data. And all I had to do was just add that in so the same folder as the other one. So much, much easier, much, much quicker than what I would have done in the past. Okay, guys, so that's the end of the video. I hope you found it useful. If you have, can you give me a thumbs up? And if you want to see more of my videos, please remember to click the subscribe button and make sure you click the notification bell. That way, when I put a new video out, YouTube will let you know. Thank you for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.